now we're hearing that there is a plan to install a Liz Truss-style Tory leader by the popular conservatism group. Yes, the Popcorns, as they're known, a movement aiming to restore democratic accountability and deliver popular Conservative policies. Well, they've reportedly devised a plan to introduce a future Tory leader aligned with Liz Truss's views on economic policy. So presumably that means small state, free markets, but of course Liz Truss's downfall was partially to do with lots of spending, wasn't it, Tom? It was. Well, I, I, it's, it's, it's my belief that had she not... Uh, committed to spending up to £200 billion mm. on, on fixing energy prices, then all of her tax cuts altogether, that was only adding up to around £50 billion. And I said, what, what upset the markets more? Was it the £50 billion in tax cuts or the potentially £200 billion in extra spending? I mean, I, I think it's, it's yes, fairly those, clear, Those right? woke left markets. Anyway, this comes after the probability of a Conservative defeat has intensified, of course, after continued polls suggest the likelihood of a significant loss. Well, you could say that again. Well, let's speak to a former advisor to David Cameron, Philip Blonde, on this issue, and perhaps on the issue of replacing Rishi Sunak at all. Because, uh, Philip, the, the plan, as it, as it is being reported, is, of course, for after a Conservative Party election defeat. I suppose the big question there, will, I mean, will there be any sort of dregs of the Conservative Party left to lead? Well, I mean, I've been talking about this for some six months now. I, I said I thought there would be a leadership contest because the Conservatives, I, I feared, would go below 100 seats. At the time I was speaking, they're around 220 or so. And so it's proved they're, they're continuing to lose support. And so the argument against doing anything uh, is weakening and weakening. And mm. we've got the local elections coming up. So it would not surprise me if there was a no confidence vote shortly after the cataclysmic uh, local election defeats before the election. And really what you're seeing is lots of people are talking about after the election. But in reality, they're preparing for before the election because the the odds on the balloon going up um, after the local elections have sh have shortened considerably, mm. and it's sort of fifty fifty now as to whether there will indeed be a vote of no confidence. I mean, Philip, a lot of people would roll around laughing or at least scoff at the idea that uh, a Liz Truss-style leader is the answer to the Conservative Party's woes because, of course, Liz Truss didn't last too long in the position. But others think the Conservative Party needs to get back to its roots. And part of that has to be moving towards a more low-tax economy, a more free market economy and everything that goes with, with that. I mean, at this point... Do you think it would be madness to replace, to oust Rishi Sunak and replace him with someone who is more like Liz Truss in that respect? Well, there's two points. Let's separate them. I don't think it's madness to change leader because I think a new leader now, even though uh, can mitigate the losses and get the Conservative Party back where they can challenge, Labour will have a very difficult time governing. Um, the social liberalism, if I can call it that, the trans agenda is very unpopular in the country. And I think they could be subject to challenge by a revivified Conservative Party. So I think it's all to fight for. I mean, I think a defeat is baked in, but it's the scale of the defeat that isn't. But Philip, not is there not a risk that changing leader would make... Uh, what, what the argument is that the Labour Party has been making all of this week is Tory chaos, Tory chaos. If you change leader yet again, doesn't that Labour Party argument, if anything, get uh, bolstered? But what, what we have at the moment is government by detail rather than by principle. You get the sense that the government isn't gripping any of the major challenges facing this country. And to have uh, a leader who did... I think would dramatically improve the Conservative mm. Party chances, and they're losing. Um, they're losing the 2019 voters. And here's to your, to your second point, Emily. The appeal of Liz Truss, free market conservatism, is about eight percent of the voting public. Um, people vo who voted for Brexit, who constitute the majority of the 2019 uh, electorate 
are not in favor of free market policies, largely yeah. because they've lost out from them. The free market, uh, as we practiced it since Thatcher and Blur, has shifted wealth to Asia, has improved the condition of the Indian and Chinese working class, if I can call it that, but has exposed the Western working class to insecurity, wage stagnation, and essentially um, deprivation. But some people would argue that, that you know, it's uh, domestic policies that have, have left the cost of living so high. So some of those supply side reforms that Liz Truss wanted in terms of planning regulations and other things fracking. would have made things cheaper. Fracking would have created new jobs, made things cheaper for the everyday person. I agree. I, I agree with uh, some of the points Liz, Liz Truss makes. I rather like her personally. Uh, but the, the point is, is that what the, what the right in the whole of the West has to face, and the Americans have faced this, and they're facing it on the continent, is the free market model immiserates the working class in the West. And we either adjust to that reality or we don't. If the it's also provided party, lots of cheap stuff for people in the West. Although, although I think lots, what, what, what Liz Truss might say stuff. to that is she's written this book. It's coming out on the 16th of this month. It says 10 years to save the West. That's the title. And a lot of it is about how we shouldn't have free and unfettered trade with countries like China and only have free trade with countries that share our democratic values. That's one of her big ideas. She calls it an economic NATO. Uh, I suppose that's a, that's a big step change from the uh, paradigm we're living in now. Yeah, I, uh, this reminds me of the tariff reforms that, that we used to have when we were we, we had an empire where we wouldn't ch we would ha impose tariffs outside of the empire. I don't disagree with that approach, but that is not a free market approach. It's something like a constrained uh, approach where we link our values with our mm -hmm. economic exchange. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that, the, is that for ordinary working people in Britain and in countries like Britain, in Europe and America, the free market has meant wage stagnation, rampant insecurity, and immiseration. Only after 2008, right. it meant it's increased wages, right from Margaret Thatcher, right up until the financial crisis. We had, we had some of the fastest growth of any developed economy. Yeah, but it's the distribution of that growth, Tom, that's the point. All yeah. levels of income Yeah, We can but continue this discussion, Tom, in a little bit, but we're going to yes. have to end this for now. But, Philip, thank you very much.